Hey there, my name is Alfonso and I'm a developer advocate at the Cisco DevNet organization. And I am very happy to be sharing with you the very first video of a series called Hack the RAFKit. Throughout these videos, I will share with you a couple of ideas for interesting use cases that leverage your existing Cisco RAFKit deployment. You may already be using RAFKit mostly for tag troubleshooting, but did you know that there's so much more that you can do using that very same deployment? And today we're going to have a look at one interesting use case which actually allows us to have visibility in your network with Grafana dashboards. This is the RAFKit to Grafana dashboard framework, and we will walk through how to get this done together. This very first episode is about the general architecture and onboarding of the system. Having said that, let's take a deep dive into today's use case. Basically, what we want to have is a single pane of glass based on Grafana so that we can query configurations, statuses, and whatnot of all the different devices that we have onboarded in our Cisco RAFKit service. But the, the kind of information that we want to have reflected there, rendered in different charts and graphs, it's basically two kinds of data. The first one is the current configurations in any given device that I want to have a look at. It could be configurations, it could be statuses, it could be whatever I may need. Then the second kind of information is time series based data. That means the evolution in time of a, a, any given status, any given configuration, so that I can track how it has been changing in a specific time frame. And having these two sources of data combined on a single pane of glass based on Grafana allows us to make some business uh, intelligence decisions to uh, analyze what is going on in our uh, network at any given point. And well, the first part of it is that if you already have your devices onboarded on Cisco RAFKit for any other given purpose, normally it's with a, a for Cisco attack troubleshooting. Well, you can actually leverage that, that existing onboarding and do all this magic. So. Well, it's not magic per se. We have put together an open source framework for you to make use of, for you to adapt to your own needs. It is hosted here at developer.cisco.com at the code exchange uh, platform. And if you navigate there and you have a look, you will find this repository here. It's very well documented. It has a wiki with all the different configurations that you need to do to get started and to basically make it of your own. Nevertheless, all the steps needed for configuring it, that's what we're going to have a look at in this series of videos. So now let's get started with all the different tools and components of this project. The very first one is this a small assistant that helps us to onboard our RAFKit user in the RAFKit cloud for non-interactive authentication. What do we need that for? Well, all this solution is based on individual containers working together to bring up these Grafana dashboards. However, we need to have an authorized user onboarded on our RAFKit service, but also onboarded on the RAFKit cloud for non-authentication, sorry, for non-interactive authentication, because we don't want to have to open the web interface, click on authentication every time we spin up this environment. So for, for avoiding that, we onboard that user for this non-interactive authentication. Once that is done, we can jump straight into all the different components of the framework. The first one, as you can see here, it's a fast API middleware service that we have here for uh, ha hosting a series of API endpoints. These API endpoints will be actually querying the RAFKit service to get information of our devices. All of these, of course, it's based on a Docker Compose, all these different com um, containers that we will have a look at right now. So we have here the RAFKit SDK. This is a very simple Python-based container. 
but it is very powerful in the sense of being the middleware between the rest of my components and the RadKit service. What comes next is the actual Grafana container. This one will have our device inventory and also it will have our different dashboards. It will query using REST the API endpoints that I have in my fast API middleware container. The next container that we have in this platform, it's an InfluxDB time series database. It will have a bucket for all our time uh, records. And we're basically going to be using the SDK for Python so that we can push these configurations when invoked by the API endpoints in my FastAPI middleware. Then we have in between Grafana and InfluxDB, we're going to be running Flux queries so that we can get all that time series based information and render it there in different graphs in my Grafana. And then last but not least, I want to be able to trigger this data collection on a periodic basis. It could be with a cron job, and well, that's what we're going to be doing here with the tool that is included in the repository. We shall deploy a cron job so that it creates a Docker container with a Python script within that can actually query that information push it into InfluxDB on a time on a specific time frame and just render it there in Grafana. So this is basically the, the structure of the project that we will be having a look at in the upcoming videos of this series. However, for now, let's get started with the very first component, which is the remote user onboarding. First of all, you need to clone the repository into your local environment. And once you do that, if you navigate to the components of it, you will find a series of different folders and files. But right now, what we want to focus on is on the RathKit to Grafana config folder, where you are going to have to find the config.yaml file. It is in this file where you need to provide the information to enable that connectivity between your system and your RadKit server. Here you will have to provide the different information such as your host, your port, your uh, RadKit service username, that means the user that is onboarded and enabled in your RadKit server, and also the service code, which is, which is available in that window. Perfect. Our file is ready. All the details are already in place. So it's time to register this user for allowing the non-interactive authentication in the RathKit cloud. For doing that, we have a very simple tool included in this project. We just need to type make on board. That's it. What we are doing right now is that we are triggering a Docker container. This has a Python file within that will help us with these prompts to set up that non-interactive authentication. But first of all, we need to log in into the RathKit cloud using our SSO credentials. So for that, we need to click here. We need to open this link. It will trigger our browser. And here you will find the Cisco RathKit access screen. We just click on accept after authenticating here. I authenticated before, so my uh, cookies, my credentials are already here. So this is good. Authentication went fine. And now if I go back to my prompt, you will see here that I'm being asked for a private key password. I'm just going to type it in. Perfect. Then I'm going to type it again. And that's it. What we did right now was to create a series of certificates that are locally kept in our environment. And I will be able to use those certificates for a non-interactive authentication. This is going to be very, very useful later on when we trigger, when we set up all the different components of this project.